Welcome, Jewelers. Welcome all. Episode 7 here of the Jewelers Podcast. As always, I have my good friends Agentic State and Squanchy Games here today. How you guys doing? Doing good. Doing great. Glad to be back after our uh, la- taking last week off. Me and Squanch were uh, in Portland, and now we're back in the great state, Texas. Yes, sir. Portland is beautiful, by the way. Great place. Uh, lots of beautiful mountains and waterfalls we got to see. Lots of hiking. Gorgeous. It was absolutely gorgeous. Love to hear it. Back in the saddle today. Had an eventful weekend uh, for you guys to come back into the, the kingdom here. A lot to cover. We're going to be covering the mining exploit. We're going to be covering Fris- Frisky Fox's latest uh, and greatest news. Um, as well as just overall the state of the project and some new features as well. Um, so let's just get straight into it here. Now, we're kind of just going to open the floor here. A lot has been happening between those three things, the mining exploit, Frisky Fox, um, and then some other findings with the LP and such. So what's your guys' opinions? Where are you guys at in the project currently? Uh, bags, are, are you buying more? Have you been on the sideline? What are you guys feeling at this current moment in the kingdom? I was feeling a lot. Anybody who follows me on Twitter already knows um, that I've been feeling a lot. Um, I've been getting and focusing in on all this new information as it was coming out. Um, I was very active on Twitter these past three days. I'm glad this has been addressed by the team. Um, I see like both sides here right i see the people who who defend Fr- uh, frisky all the way and i also see the people who were asking the right and the hard questions uh that really did need to be answered um so i see both sides of it i think me as an individual and uh, i'm just gonna follow the leadership of frisky here i mean he said that he learned a lot over these three days uh about the way he handled this situation i think i can look into myself too and I think I learned a lot here um, about uh, how I'm going to operate my Twitter going forward and how I'm going to be careful what I interact with, what I look at, and probably do more due diligence as far as what I validate before I tweet it. Not that I tweeted anything that's invalid, but um, I do think that like maybe uh, some of the stuff that was worded could have been worded differently. I think I could have got taken a big different approach here. Uh, but just like everybody else, you know, I'm 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 working to improve every day. So, uh, but that being said, uh, there were some things that were of concern. And uh, overall, without like going deep dive into what happened, I'm going to assume we all know what happened. And uh, I I just like the way the team addressed it. I'm very comfortable with uh, everything that Frisky has has told us. It, it checks out a lot of the timeline of what Frisky talks about definitely matches up with a lot of the on-chain transactions that i've seen on twitter uh to me it makes a lot of sense um i i'm glad frisky came out and came clean uh because i i think the argument can be made that he wasn't honest and upfront from the jump and and i and i respect anybody who decided to leave because they can't trust frisky anymore uh i i I have to say, like, I see that side of it, but after hearing Frisky's side, and after him explaining his side of the story, man, I I can't help but give the guy another chance. He's done too much good. Uh, He's done too much good for this community. He's done too much good for crypto, and and I'm choosing to believe him. So so that's where I'm at with it, and I was back and forth with it, with different information that came out. Uh, When I first knew about the mining exploit, I tweeted out, Hey, I'm so, holding my jewel real, bags. Real, real quick, real quick. Let's, since we're talking about the mining exploit right now, let's, because I know we got a lot of new people in our guild uh, to the game, and they they may not be exactly aware of what was happening, what was being exploited. So mm-hmm. let's lay out the foundation to what started this whole thing, which was the mining exploit that led to other findings. But uh, do you want to go ahead and explain what the mining exploit was or, you know? um, Yeah, yeah, I can explain it. it. Okay, so uh, my timelines and all, this is just like a TLDR. This isn't exactly what happened, and I might get some small details wrong. But overall, this is the generality of how the exploit was happening. 
you would just take your lock jewel you'd, you'd have a bunch of different wallets loaded up with uh miners and you would just uh start a lock jewel quest on one wallet as soon as you fire that bad boy up transfer the lock jewel over to the next one where you got a miner waiting boom fire that bad boy up transfer it over to the next one so on so forth when you put the lock jewel back in the in the wallet when you claim your hero then you get the reward right so they're just tossing around their lock jewel stack and they're able to lock it in let in a lot faster than four hour increments right that you would right. normally have to wait so um they, when they, this they, they, they did some estimates too on how much was roughly being like uh how much unlocked jewel was being or how much lock jewel was being unlocked per day by miners and I think they said about a thousand an hour. Is that correct, Squanch? I don't have the exact numbers. I'm kind of like ignorant of this bliss here. Like, uh, I don't want to know how much was done. It doesn't really matter. And like, the, at the end of the day, and uh, all that matters is that lock jewel is going to be unlocked one day anyway. So right, it correct. came into the ecosystem at a bad time when Bitcoin's down, when a lot of uh, majors are down, when a lot of altcoins are doing bad. So it's a bad time to have uh, increased inflation in our token, creates more sell pressure, price goes down, bad timing, and all of this was bad timing. This was like legit a perfect storm. Uh, but with the with the mining quest, regardless how much it was, it was a significant enough, uh, amount, in my opinion, enough to help yes. suppress the, 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 the price of Jewel, you know, anything right. over, you know, five or six thousand Jewel you know per wallet per day is gonna be a lot of jewel right right so. and and i want to just add to that real quick that i was watching the uh climb crypto and ogre podcast or um youtube channel when uh the just the day or the day after the mining exploit came out and climb crypto showed a really really interesting chart and essentially, he was showing it from like Crystal Veil launch to, you know, what was then, I think, Thursday or yeah, Thursday night, um, also last Thursday. And essentially, when you looked at the chart, you were almost getting a very, almost the exact same size red candle every day on the chart. Um, and it was just going down almost like a staircase, like that was just evenly, um, you know, being. Every day, about the same amount, you know, just decreasing in value. And it, that's really odd. That almost looks like a, you know, <laughs> a set controlled liquidation. And which would make sense if these whale wallets were, you know, basically liquidating the same amount of jewel almost every day. Um, we would see something very similar to what he was showing. And him and Ogre's conclusion was, well, now that this won't happen anymore, we should have some positive, you know, we will have a lot less sell pressure. Anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. So uh, just to let the viewers know kind of like what it may have looked like, you know, throughout, uh, throughout the last couple of weeks with the exploit, what it could be, uh, the pattern it could have been causing. So sorry, Squanch, go ahead. No, okay. So essentially, so they were passing around the lock tool, unlocking mm -hmm. it quicker than they were supposed to. Um, another thing, you know, I guess the team originally didn't think that this was that big of a deal because one, there weren't that many wallets doing it. And two, they thought, well, you got to have a lot of lock jewel for this to make sense. And there's not a whole lot of wallets with enough lock jewel for this to like really affect anything. And I guess they felt like they could watch it or monitor it enough where it's not a big deal. Um, now they did think it was a big enough deal for us to vote on it. Because uh, there was a vote held on it back in January, I believe. My date might not be exact, but that's irrelevant. It was several months back. Uh, two or three months back, we did a vote on it. Uh, we voted to close the exploit. The patch never got released or done, right? And this is two or three months later. And they had found out that recently people had found uh, had factored in the jackpot. So... Um, it made it more effective for even small wallets and more worth their time for small wallets to do the exploit because when you factor in you're getting a jackpot 10% of the time, it really skews off the numbers and it makes it really profitable to go after your lock jewel. So to clarify, when we say small wallets, we're not 
because we're talking in terms of relativity here. We're not talking we're, wallets mm-hmm. with just like you know, uh, five hundred no, jewel. I, I we're think talking... you, I think you got to have two K plus lock jewel for this to really make sense right. for you to yep. attend. Yep, so so I don't know the exact number, but you got to have a some lock jewel. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, but once you factor in those jackpots, like. Uh, it didn't even make sense for them to send out a teams of six. There were different strategies where they were just sending out teams of one. I don't know because I didn't do it uh, mm-hmm. um, or anything like that. So I don't know the exact details how the strategy was worked or what the optimal strategy was. It all leads to the same result and that unlock jewel was getting done quicker. So once this came out and the team was like, okay, we have to address this, they fixed it within 12 hours, you know, which is perfect. We love the quick response, but then. That begs, that opens up the question, well, like, dude, if y'all, if it, we voted on this three months ago and it only took 12 hours to fix, like, what the hell, you know? We so all felt me, screwed. We all felt here. cheated. What is the vote on? Because, like, in, in my personal opinion, when I saw it come across, uh, my first thought, well, I had a lot of thoughts, to be honest. But as the days went on and, and you hear about the mining exploit, my thought was, okay, they, they knew about it in January, but maybe they didn't release it because... Um, if they told us that there was a bug in place, uh, then that would just create this horde of people trying to take advantage of the bug. I know some people sure. are morally correct, morally good to themselves, and, and will, won't will take advantage of the exploit. But I heard someone talking about the meta, and when you're one of those top wallets and you're competing against these other top wallets in a sense, um, you almost if you're not using the technology that's available to you, you're almost – um just going backwards in a sense you know so i heard someone talking about that and i just Uh wonder if they kind of kept it like low key as long as they could and then of course more people and i believe they said it it, it was uh more people were starting to do it and they realized the lock jewel amount that was being mined per day was increasing rapidly and then they had to act on it and then that's why they went into hyper mode and i believe frisky said or the team said they were up all night and they did get that 12 hour fix i just wonder how much that goes into it but what was this vote in january because i honestly don't remember so the vote in january was hey uh do you guys you know are we going to fix the mining exploit and i think they had uh a vote like i didn't pay too much attention to it and i'll tell you why because it, it was already 99% in favor. I'm like, okay, well, okay. whatever the fuck we're voting on here, it's over. It's some small – and I do know it was downplayed because I did not think it was serious. So they like, probably like, didn't go this. into de- descriptive detail about what it was, how to do it, obviously. They just kind of said there's an exploit. We're voting on, I it. Think, vote on I, it. I think when the exploit was originally found, it was not a big exploit. It okay. wasn't until they developed – great strategies to optimize the exploit where it got out of hand okay if that makes sense no definitely. so when it was for it, and then they found ways to optimize it and and get it better and then that's when things started getting back and then you know the secret gets out you know word of mouth it eventually gets out you know someone mines their whole stack of lock jewel and they're like holy crap let me get another stack and then you know it, it they start probably start telling their friends you know like and then it just gets out but uh yeah so uh, that's and then so once this happened people wanted to know they wanted to know well were any devs doing this mining exploit and then that's but, when these all got well, started looking at a lot harder before and then we go there before we go there we i want to clarify they did give an answer for why they didn't fix the exploit immediately they did they yeah. did, and, uh, and I really like the about, answer. Let's, yeah, let's talk about that answer because I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, you know, why that was. Well, you know, all of us want the team to ship, and we wanted Crystal Vale, and we want them to meet deadlines, and we put pressure on this team to to produce. We really do, and they fo- they were focusing on producing, and mm-hmm. it's Frisky's culture is build, 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 right? So I think that the cup comp- or. DeFi Kinos, they just kind of said, oh, not top priority. It's not a big exploit. Strategies weren't optimized. They weren't quantifying how the strategies optimizing will lead to too much locked jewel. So uh, they said, let's keep working. Let's keep working. Let's keep working. And, it, you know, then it got out of control. Then they, they nipped it in the butt. So, well, and they admit that that was a big mistake. And, in um, addition, and, and that's in all addition. that. Mm-hmm. In addition, the, the, I do want to say that the original plan that they had to fix the exploit was not the one they ended up using. 
Yes, that's um, important right. to point out. Yeah, too. this is important to point out because the original way to fix the exploit would have been a very complicated. It would have caused a lot of people to have to move a lot of their lock jewel, and uh, you know it probably would have ended ended up people losing out on their you know lock jewel. Um, and so that is one reason why they decided not to fix it immediately. And then they came up, you know, with a with new code for another plan later down the road. Uh, which was much more, which was much less invasive to the community. So, um, and if I, if you want to, Squanch, you can explain those plans, and uh, you know, because well, I know you know them real well, like are well, better than me. Yeah. So they wanted to possibly one of the possibilities they floated was, hey, well, let's move all Lockjaw to a new contract, which would mean you would then have to go swap or claim uh, your current lock jewel for a new locked jewel. So you would go swap them out. Now the downside to that is one, you got to get everybody to do that, and then two, when you do deploy that contract, it's going to make it look like DeFi Kingdoms rugged on Dex Screener, on Coin Gecko. They're mm -hmm. using live uh, data feeds, and it would show that the contract, it would look like the contract rug, and it would lead to insane sell pressure. And I don't care how many damn times they tweet out, hey. We're doing this. It's going to look like we're rugging. We're not rugging. I don't know how they could have handled that. That would have just been a freaking nightmare. And uh, I don't care how many times they announced it. People still would have panic sold, and it still would have been a disaster, right? Absolutely. Even if they gave us, Absolutely. even if they gave us two weeks' notice, every single day they drilled it down our throats. It would not matter. So, um, with that being said, that's so they were exploring all these different options. They got the fix. It's fixed. Um, and due to that mining exploit and them taking so long on it, it, it caused people to, to investigate wallets further. And then uh, that's kind of where they found the discrepancy in the white paper wallet address versus the initial liquidity providing wallet, which is not good at all. Mm -hmm. um, like that's just uh, there's just no excuse for that. And uh, and I understand why it created a bunch of FUD. I mean. I totally get it. These guys are right, man. That white that white paper wallet address needs to be correct. Um, and if it's not correct, it's it's totally deceitful, or that it's easy to jump to the conclusion that it's to be deceitful and that it's to make money uh, behind closed doors. You're trying to hide something. I mean, man, it's like if you got a girlfriend and you're like, "Hey, let me go through your phone," and they're like, "No." Well, what you know? Like I don't know, man. Red flag. It's just, it's just yeah. like it's not a good look, you know. So it's, but uh, I think the team admitted, like, hey, well, and then Frisky had the the story where he's like, well, it's my friend's wallet. He didn't really know crypto, whatever, whatever, whatever. So I'm choosing to believe it because really the ultimate solution here with the liquid luck wallet is that they're going to burn the LP tokens and and then it doesn't matter who's in control of the wallet. They can never withdraw the LP, right? So real, real quick, I want to rewind it just a, a bit. Um, so when we talk about the uh, original, the, the community LP, the, the wallet that had the original community LP, mm -hmm. the problem Joel was... Won. Mm -hmm. Joel, yeah, the, yeah. The problem was just to clarify is that that wallet's real address did not match what was on the white paper. Correct. Correct. Right. And then there, then the community investigated the real wallet, and they noticed that uh, funds were being moved in that wallet. Um, and now in the white papers, I do want to say that it does not say that the rewards will. Are are subject to to staying on that wallet? Correct. It only says the original money that was put in is going to stay in the the liquidity pool on that wallet, which that has that has happened. None of the original yep. funds that have been in that wallet have moved. That has hold hold held true right. the whole time. Thank God. Yeah, only the rewards, and there was nothing in the white paper about that. Now you know, does that seem sketchy? Still, yes, yeah, but, yeah. but but it is it is but but there was nothing that they did not tell us you or there was nothing that they did not say you no know, that it didn't do essentially like uh, no that's a double I negative but, but like yeah. dude in this game of crypto it is a game of who gets the information mm -hmm. first 
And when you first see this information, it's a race mm-hmm. to the exit. Otherwise, right. you know, you get caught holding the bag. So, like, Absolutely. these little secrets, these little, I don't want to, uh, secrets wasn't the right word. These little uh, miscommunications for the team, or dude, they're going to lead to massive sell-offs every freaking time. A high-level so. team, a high-level organization cannot miss out. De- they have to be detail-oriented, yet to do- yeah. detail-oriented so, down to every little detail. Go on. I agree. So the question is from the community is who the that the community had really is who was – uh, basically moving the rewards from that wallet because nobody knew knew who and a lot of people were throwing out theories that it was frisky that it was a rogue dev and this is kind of where you left off squanch where i before i re you know did a rewind here Mm -hmm. um so and there's a lot of people trying to investigate on you know who oh you know who actually controls that wallet and Today, Frisky said that it's an acquaintance that did that invested in in the project. That was his answer. In the amount he of fifteen thousand dollars as as initial liquidity, and they did. His story goes, he told his acquaintance to only not allowed to take out the liquidity, only able to access the rewards. But go on. Yes, yes. Which that's that's exactly what has happened. But um, the issue is that like, look, I'm. I am not leaving the project. I'm just going to say that straight up. But what I would have liked to seen happen is that how in the hell is this wallet not a multi-sig wallet? How in the hell is it only one person, you know, has access to this, uh, you know, the community liquidity pool? Like that is kind of negligent. And they said they're going to, you know, fix it. They said they're going to turn it into a multi-sig wallet in one of their announcements, and that they're going to burn all, you know, all the the tokens anyway but you know that 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 is kind of where that's the criticism that i have like out of this whole situation the only thing that i really to me that was really really done wrong is that that wallet was not multi-sig it was not ran by a group of leadership you know it was just in the hands of one person i've got to say this 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 helps frisky story align with that he wasn't that involved on the back end development of loot swap because frisky would have known all of these things and all of these practices and not neglected them if he had performed a rug before that's what i'm gonna say it sounded like frisky's experience is not is more in the front end and like i'm not a blockchain engineer and i try to stress this on twitter but i think i got the basics down and i think that kind of helps his story where he's talking about Hey, I was involved with Loot Swap, but I was more on front end. And this would make sense that he wasn't the head dev of Loot Swap or anything like that because he would have this whole rugging system down. And I know the the different kinds of rugs and all that shit. I've been on all these DGEN coins, right? And mm. I, th- this really shows to me that like the Frisky may not be an experience. He's definitely not an experience like like rugger in a sense if that makes sense and um i think that helps like make his stories align and helps everything check out for me but up up until this point you have any additional thoughts mega before we kind of go on to not to the next topics but to the next phase of this discussion yeah i mean um I think other than as more and more came out, I think I've kind of leveled with everything that's gone on. Um, I, I do believe Frisky. It's There's a lot of fishiness going on in my opinion, but um, when he goes into detail on everything and his stories align multiple times throughout, um, I mean, I, I give him the benefit of the doubt. Now, could things have been approached differently? Like Squanchy said, yes, 100%, and I think he will learn from this. Um one thing we talked about that was kind of strange was the vote for him so fast. The vote for him, yes or no, should he stay on the project? Uh, okay, some thought yeah, of this as an avoidance. Um, is this the next thing you were going to get into here? Yeah, yeah, I was like, let's go ahead and table that uh, into the next phase of this discussion. Perfect. So for those that don't know, yeah, Frisky, after like the mining exploit was fixed and then people started digging into these the, the wallets and trying to throw out theories that you know he was controlling the lp original lp wallet um there was a lot of people throwing shade at him on twitter on discord etc so uh 
as Mega, you just said, he decided to uh, throw an announcement out to for the community to vote him out, and then go. We'll uh, go ahead from there. Yes. We've seen this story before. Yeah, it, where <laughs> where a there's a rug and someone wants to get voted out. We've all seen it, mm -hmm. right? This is the mo I, it, like I think I kind of underestimated um, everybody's like overall crypto knowledge here because this is exactly what Danny did when he got caught working with uh, Sifu or whatever that other dev's name is and in all these other uh, spell and uh, DeFi projects. And the first thing he did, Danny, the first thing Danny did after he borrowed against all of what he knew would be his liquidated assets and borrowed stables and cashed out, basically essentially rugged, um, he put up a vote. He said, hey, do you guys think I should be the leader of the community? And I think it's a kind of psychological response to like, hey, I don't want responsibility. And and I think that's how it could be interpreted. And I don't think Frisky thought, thought that through. I'm an emotional guy. I regret some of the tweets I put out there a lot. So I totally understand. And I I I feel Frisky and I understand him. And I see why he put up the vote. And I don't think he truly wants to leave. I don't. I think he was just in an emotional state. And I've been there before too. So... Right. Um, again, that that's why I have to stand with Frisky uh, here, because I mean he hasn't made any mistake that that I couldn't have made, and he hasn't made any decisions that I wouldn't have made. So that's kind of why, like, I'm choosing to believe him. So, yeah. Your I'd... thoughts, Meg, on him on his uh, on his you know, throwing out the announcement to vote him out? Yeah, I mean, I'd have to agree with what Squanchy says here. Um... Now, I, I know it came off as something that was a little off offsetting to some people, and it was brought up in the AMA. And Squa and excuse me, Frisky did say exactly what you said there, Squanch, that he recognized after the fact that maybe that wasn't the best decision from a community outlook standpoint. Because uh, some people take it the way that he's trying to uh, release himself from accountability and, and kind of position himself off the project slowly. But all in all, I mean, when you've been here like we have for so long and you see the work he's put in and, and the leadership he does have, um, you start to think and your mind settles back to reality a little bit and, and off the, oh my gosh, like what's going on with this project? We all are bag holders here. I mean, we have a good amount invested in this game. So when this news comes out and the community sees this and everyone's talking about it and negative comments are going here, there, everywhere, well, not a lot of positivity to find. And it's hard to find a level head in that in those moments. So, of course, you think the worst of his decision. You think he's, um, you think it's a, a negligent decision to to kind of push himself out the project. But when I did hear his explanation on the AMA, I I, I mean he's a well spoken individual, um, but I, I did feel he was he was genuine with with what he said about it and. Um, I, I'm still bullish in the project. I have re reinvested back in. From my from my standpoint, I know we were all on the sidelines for a point, or at least I was on the sidelines for a point, um, kind of just seeing what would happen over the weekend. You know, I wasn't gonna make any rash decisions. I did mm -hmm. um, Saturday night buy a hero here on these discounts because Jewel was almost to a dollar, and I was seeing some crazy buys in the tavern. So I, I sat down and, like I said, when I got back to just a level head, um, I realized like. We're, we're invested in this project and there's not even gameplay yet and we're so in love with it and and the community's so in love with it and look how much passion is here over something that could be so bad but everyone's still talking about it. everyone's still kind of sticking around wondering what's next and and i'm like you know what we're not going anywhere we could go down to 50 cents and i don't think we're going anywhere this is a temporary thing and i was hopeful that and and that was the same night that they said that they're gonna come head on straight on to this this uh, issue in the morning, 11 a.m., and that's what they did. And um, I, I couldn't be more thankful that they did have that AMA because I, I feel like it did ease a lot of people's minds in the community. And that's all I really so, have to say on it. So let's, let's, table, let's, let's table that into let's describe what we all did when all this was going down, like with – were, were we sidelining? Were we holding our bags? Were we selling? Were were we buying heroes? Like right. what was Let what was our strategy? I, was, I already said. Oh yeah, this, go for like it. What I was yeah, doing. Go Basically, for it. exactly what I just said. Held all heroes. <clears throat> 
didn't have a much at that much jewel that was just sidelines like just holding jewel i did sell that to one and just excuse me usdc held the usdc temporarily it was under 50 jewel um held that temporarily until i came to that level ed bought a few more heroes so heroes inventory eggs everything like that of course i held i didn't go to fox Esco try to sell the whole lot but um jewel and everything excuse me heroes inventory gardens everything i had allocated theirs stayed put and then uh the jewel i temporarily sold to usdc and then rebought later that night all right i mean that that's uh, that's pretty close to what i did and i think a lot of the uh the jewelers uh did well uh during this and you mentioned you scooped up a, a hero mega in our discord i saw a bunch of jewelers getting good deals on heroes so uh we were definitely buying heroes when jewel was was that low in our discord so everybody join come check it out um i disclosed what i did um in the discord and man i once i saw the transactions between frisky fox and the original wallet uh from loot swap the master dev loot swap wallet i said you know what whether this is true or not doesn't matter it's gonna dump so i got out and I'm do I'm I'm savvy to this information. I get it before a lot of other people just because of how addicted to Twitter I am. Um, so I got out at between two oh five and two dollars, um, and I messaged Agentic and Mega immediately. I said, "Hey, you know, because I have large positions." I said, "I'm pulling my gardens. I'm pulling everything." Um, and uh, just so you guys know, I DM them and I said, "And I'm not gonna I'm gonna buy back the night before the AMA, the morning of the AMA, because I think." Um, we'll pump or get our feet back grounded once every, once the team has a chance to explain, and that's the plan I executed, and I did well. Uh, I got I sold a lot of jewel at a dollar, or I'm sorry, at two dollars, and I bought most of it back at one twenty. Um, and uh, I didn't unload my full stack at a dollar twenty, um, so I ended up un unloading more at a dollar thirty five, and then more today, even after the AMA, I bought it like one seventy. So, uh, but I have more jewel now than I did before all the FUD. I have more heroes now than I did before all the FUD. Um, so that oh, being boy. said, uh, I, I'm back in it. Um, I panic sold and, uh, but you know what? I took the information and once I had some time to think about it, I got my head back on straight and I said, I'm getting back up on this horse. And I, uh, I tried to put the bottom in for the community. That's what we were joking in the discord. I said, I'm buying I'm putting the bottom in. And also, me, Agentic, and Dags, we all live in the same area. We went to go grab a beer, and I think that put the bottom in. So, um, uh, it was just good vibes there. But, uh, yeah. So bottoms that's kinda... up, bottoms in, baby. Let's go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. So, that's that's how uh, I, it went down for me. What about you, Agentic? Yeah. Uh, well, I did it a little different than y'all. Um, <clears throat> so, in, in the, the crypto space... I've I've I have uh, got caught held in the bag and rugs. You know that's happened to me. Um, the, the thing is that me too. This, this project, I just I just was very suspect of it being a rug. There's just already been so much work put into it, and it's already been at twenty dollars before, and it wasn't it didn't it wasn't rugged then. It's you know it could have gotten rugged during Crystal Vale. It wasn't rugged then. Um, it just made no sense for it to rug. You know, just all of a sudden, you know, um, you know, why would you rug a project after it's like almost, it, you know, it's getting close to a year in development, and every week they they're putting out just a a lot of new content. So, you know, I was very very um, skeptical of the claims people were making about this being a rug. I understand the worry. I just held my back. I, I did not sideline anything. I just kept everything in the gardens. I kept all my heroes. And actually, I just I did some summons <laughs> when Joel was dropping in price. Um, and I spike in summoning we saw. Yeah, yeah. I did a I did a few summons. Uh, I did not like any of the heroes I summoned, so I sold them. Uh, so congrats to those in the tavern that uh, I bought my heroes. I. I didn't sell like anything for a high price or anything, but uh, take good care of them for me. Um, also, I want to note that in the AMA, someone said that they were so grateful 
that this scare happened because there's a lot of you know there's a lot of wallets out there only floating with one or two heroes and they said you know since jewel price tanked so much dude due to this uh you know fud this is the first time they were able to afford to buy more heroes because they could actually afford a hero that over uh, uh, under a hundred dollars so you know in a way this is i think there's there's going to be some positives that come out of this um but what i did overall is i just do bi-weekly buy-ins when i get my uh paycheck and i just stuck to that schedule at the end of the month when i got my paycheck i did my normal buy-in i was you know it was a lot more jewel than what i usually get for my money and I just shoved that into the gardens with my rewards and that I had floating, and, and from some hero cells from the gar uh, from the summons. And I was able to spike up my garden rewards uh, fifty percent during this drop. Um, so yeah, that that's what I did. Uh, and I bought at one twenty one. I just deposited, you know, my normal biweekly deposit uh, near the floor. And it's only been good news since. So uh, that that is kind of how uh, you know I wrapped up the whole thing, and I was pretty satisfied with what happened today. And I guess my thoughts on, and I didn't get to say this, but uh, my thoughts on Frisky's wanting him to vote out. I do think it's a not it was not a good look. I, I'm going to agree to that. But I want people to understand uh, if you've ever been under a lot of stress. And then you have, it seems like everybody in the community is hating you. And you probably haven't slept in 24 hours. If if, if you all of a sudden were getting all this shade throw on, throw, thrown on you and you're, all, and you're under all this pressure, um, you know, there may be a moment, a lapsed moment in judgment where you're just like, yeah, you know what? Nobody's appreciating what I'm doing. Just let me out. And I know it's a bad look because in crypto and other rugs, that's a telltale sign that, you know, they're just trying to rug the project or they've rugged the project. But yeah, I just want to say, you know, I can I, I can definitely relate to, to Frisky on that. You know, I, I've been involved in projects that are high pressure and, and, and I, I have felt underappreciated in my efforts before. Uh, so I, I can relate. But anyway... Um, anything else, y'all? Uh, I guess uh, one jeweler question that relates to this scenario, and I guess we could segue into that, was is the bottom in, guys? Oh, man. Dude, I'm done. I'm done trying to call bottom. So I tried to call the bottom so many times now. Um, I do think if there was no mining exploit, I do legitimately think, or any of this FUD, I do think the bottom would have been around 380. Um yeah. So that would make Jewel at a heavy discount right now, and I do think that it is. Um, but uh, to say, to try to, no, I, well, I think it is the bottom, unless more stuff comes out about Frisky. If anything else comes out about Frisky, um, then I think the bottom is not in, man. I think uh, if, if there is one more uh, little anything on Frisky, man, it could get blown out of proportion and, and we could see it worse than we saw so, it this time. Because the people who did, the people that got Frisky's trust back, like mine, Fr Frisky's on much, like, I don't want to say, like, thin ice. It's not a good term. But, like, dude, I can't take much more, you know? Um, I'll go yeah. spend my money elsewhere, you know, where I have more trust or where it's a, new, a different area. Because, like, I got too much riding, and a lot of people will be like, well, Squanchy, why are you so over-invested? Man, fuck you. I'm a degen. I'm gonna be over-invested. I over-invest in all this shit, so fuck you. Um, so but, like, that, I couldn't take it, and I do know that it would, I think it, we could, like, if, let's just say, let's just say, because Frisky today, and I just gotta tell everybody where my mind's at, Frisky today did mention today that he used to go under the other alias of Blacksmith, if there's more news about this blacksmith dev working with another rug or something like that, dude, just think, what would happen? Same thing. It'd be the same cycle all over again, but I don't know if it'd recover. If any so, of his story does not align, it's going to be bad news, but go on, Agenda. Yeah. 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 So, so that's that's the thing I, I want to bring up here with, you know, with trust, right? It, it takes 
you know, months to years to build trust, but it can all, it, you know, it can easily fall apart and be broken forever in the matter of, you know, seconds. Um, but at, I want to segue this into their announcements of what they're going to do to prevent this stuff from happening, which was they're going to do, uh, they're going to hire a regular internal audit, uh, audit agency that they're going to have on retainer. I will do routine audits of everybody on the development team's wallets. Um, Amazing. They're going to do they're going to do a multi sig wallet for the community uh, LP wallet. Right? It should have already been done, but already amazing. Been done. But yeah, they're going to do that. And there was some other things they're going to they they brought up the website for a qu AMA that's, questions. That is so cool, so amazing. And you know what? That's when I started buying my jewel back when they made the announcement about that website. I said, "This is it. This AMA is going to go great." Everything's going to go, and that's when I started buying back. But go ahead. And uh, I, I can't remember off the top of my head what else was on that list, but those were the major things, right? Uh, uh, they're going to burn the LP tokens. They're going to burn the LP tokens. That's that's correct, that's and huge. which is going to give us some positive pressure because there's millions of uh, of Jewel 1 tokens in there. or, or Jewel, There's millions of Jewel 1. Well, uh, worth $4 million dollars between right. Jewel and 1. Yeah. So upbeat so, put like the uh you know well how much money's in the jewel one pool right now yeah it's uh, it well it's a, it's a percentage of the pool but it, it's not everything unless i'm unless yeah, a lot a, of money is left jewel it's one it's is 37 mil currently so oh, a that's a chunk. huge percentage that's almost that's yeah. a good percent. chunk. it's almost yeah so they, more than 10 percent. so so you know locking that in there forever will be nice um yeah, absolutely but, so, so i'm gonna say this I felt that their announcements were was a good step to, I think, earning trust back. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like I like y'all said, you know, sus, uh, you know, subject to uh, to change on any other news that comes out. Uh, do y'all want to, uh, Mega? Do you want to uh, take control and on to other topics, or do y'all want yeah, to have uh, any closing? Let's yeah. um. Let's go into a few more jeweler questions here. Um, now we will. Are, are we okay with moving across the uh, every uh, the bad news kind of kind of type of subjects here? Should we move on to yeah, the jeweler we, questions? We, we, we didn't. Yeah, we'll move on to the questions. I just want to add one thing. Mm -hmm. We didn't get into Frisky's relationship with Loot Swap. We don't right. need to. He he released the document about it. Go read it. Um, we'll he's going to put it in, in the description. Yes, we'll include that in the description. He's going to give you the story a lot better than any kind of um, short summary that we'll provide you here. And I would tell you this, if you're investing in this game and you and you haven't already read that or you're not looking at that, I think that, that you you should be doing more due diligence and you should be reading things like that. So I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, but uh, we'll put that in there. That explains that. And that wraps up pretty much all the FUD and everything uh, that was going around. And we're ready to move on to questions. And I, I think between us, and I think I'm speaking for the community here, is back to normal podcast, man. No more uh, putting Frisky up on it, it, his feet to the flames, or like we're just done with this drama. I'm ready to to answer these questions and uh, move on from this and go back to the way it was before. For sure, definitely. Uh, now the the next question we have here from the Discord. This one comes from Gray. So we're going to get into the new hero classes here. What do we think the new advanced class will be? He mentioned potentially a reaver. What do we think, guys? Oh, man. Uh, I, I'm thinking, dude, I don't know. I wanted to say it's a yeti, but it can't be because all the classes are human, right? We haven't had a real. So, uh, but no, I don't. Uh, an assassin would be my guess. But that, I know that's pretty similar to a ninja. But Berserker, Seeker, maybe they make an assassin. That would be my guess. You know, honestly, I'm just, I'm not too, I'm just not the most cultured in Norse mythology or anything like that. So, you know, I have no real, I would maybe say like, maybe like a raider or something. Something Ooh, Viking. A raider, dance, a know, Viking. Like, uh, yeah. 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 A raider yeah, would be you know, cool. So, That's like an upgraded pirate kind of. I would guess. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe something like that. That that would be the best creative thing that I could I could uh, think about. 
but uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's going to be a lot of hype about this, you know, when we'll talk about this later, the or maybe, but the Gen Zeros, you know, coming out this week. The raffles. Yeah, definitely. We'll get yeah. into that here just in a second. Um, my guess, I don't, I'm, I'm the same way, Agentic. I don't know too much here about mythology. I used to fuck with it a lot, but um, nowadays, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm leaning towards something like a watch guard or even like a, um, uh. Like I'm, I'm still with the with the theme of the Vikings. Something, but it's got to be elite. It's got to be amazing. So once the once I saw the Berserker and the Seer, I mean those are unreal. The the artwork on those, it's just it's amazing. So I don't know. I'm interested to see, and, and only time will tell. But um, I know Agentic has some alpha here. If we'll move into the new topics, um, some alpha about summoning strategies. This was also in Gray's question from the Discord. Um, we'll, we'll dig into about what are your guys' strategies with Jewel being so low currently? Are you guys summoning more? Have you, be, have you stopped summoning altogether? Um, and then you wanted to touch on the background traits as well. So some interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, Squanch, you want to go in on your summoning strategy first? or do you? Want I mean, to I just DJ and summon some heroes. <laughs> I said, screw it. Jewel's cheap. Um, I got some... Heroes, I saw summoned a Dragoon. Uh, got lucky there, Mining Dragoon. Um, so, pre pretty decent hero. And then I went for a Dread Knight. I missed there. Um, luckily, I got a shout-out Dags. And shout-out Gray, too. Um, love you guys. Uh, but Dags uh, sold me uh, his Sage. Uh, so I used that to breathe with my Dragoon, and I got another Sage, which I immediately sold. Because, you know, I already have enough of those. I, need, I just need a Dread Knight to complete my collection. So let me ask you this, Squanchy. Uh, when you look to choose summoning, you know, hires, like what traits are you looking for in those, like uh, skill wise, subclass? -wise, I always subclass. try to get the best That's, subclass possible. Yeah. I don't focus on the profession as much. Mm -hmm. um, I try to get the best subclass, and uh, I think that's because I think it'll pay out in PvP. Okay. Um, I, I guess I'll go next. Uh, so right now, I, I, I started summoning a couple weeks ago, um, and I do pay attention to subclass. I try to get subclass as much as I can aligned, but it's not really the biggest thing I'm focused on right now. Honestly, I am trying to uh, summon based on physical traits. I am trying to get something that's artistically badass looking. Um, and that kind of leads into our next question here, but uh, I want Mega to get his uh, summoning strategy in before I go into that. But yeah, essentially what I'm I'm just going to tell you, uh, be up front, I'm trying to get a summoner that has the uh, demon wings and uh, and a, you know one of the nice looking sets of horns. Uh, I pr I prefer the ram horns. And I like to have it aligned with you know element wise too, just because I think that could uh that could add to the game art and pvp so i try to get a i'm trying right now to get a dark summoner with ram horns and demon wings just to kind of have like the whole demon look going on uh but uh anyway uh what are your current strategies mega when it comes to summoning yeah that sounds sweet what you're going for man i can't wait to see yeah. you hit that uh but currently i have not summoned in quite a bit to be honest um, with Jewel being low, though, it definitely is intriguing. I'll see. I, I just bought um, I just bought a Thief, so potentially I might look to, to summon here. Um, one of my heroes, I just bought a, a Warrior as well with seven, seven summons and um, a solid mining trait. So I'll see if I can get something going, um, especially with the price being low. But I'm kind of staying on the sidelines as far as summoning goes currently. All right. Well, I'll go into talking about uh, Gray's next question. Uh, he wanted us to dig into some background traits. And, you know, this is a kind of a niche thing in the community right now. Like some people are really into like trying to get these uh, physical traits that, as far as we know right now, don't have anything to do with PvP or performance in your characters or anything like that. But, I, you know, to my knowledge, that's to be determined. Um. So, I obviously I did not have the time to try to look up every single trait. 
Uh, but personally, I've been interested in getting the uh, the Demon Wings. So I went ahead and did some research on what brings up the certain kinds of wings for heroes. And I can tell you there's a definite formula. And it's, it's like matching heroes for their profession. Or not profession, uh, for their next class. So just like you have to combine a... Um, a paladin and dark knight to make a dragoon. You have to combine uh, background trait or physical traits to get higher or to get different looking physical traits. So like second level physical traits. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and let me talk about the uh, the wings here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just bring up my hero list so I can kind of uh, talk about uh, some of these traits. So. Right now, I'm going for the uh, the demon wings, and the two back, uh, physical traits that lead to that are the down tail. So you'll see here this this priest has the down tail, and the devil tail. So if you do summons with a down tail and a devil tail, you are more likely, or you have a higher chance of getting the demon wings. Um, so that, that is, that's, that was my first one I figured out because that's the one I've been so aggressively trying to chase. Uh, then for some other ones, uh, the uptail, and then if your character has nothing on their back, uh, so like this archer here, it has nothing. And then if you find something with an uptail, like this sage, uh, there's a, that would allow you to get the bird wings. Uh, so, if or a higher chance of getting the bird wings, and then for the butterfly wings, that is a uh, a lion tail um, and a ninja sword. So I don't think I have any heroes with the lion tail, um, but I do have one with the ninja sword, and I'm sure most of y'all know what the uh, lion tail looks like. Dude, you're blowing my mind with the lion tail ninja sword combo. That's so yeah. cool to make the wing. That's so well thought out, you know. Yeah, yeah. So the lion tail and ninja sword to get you the butterfly wing. So this is the. Uh, oh, this isn't the ninja. Uh, uh, ninja swords. The ninja swords are the two swords on the back. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, the two, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have. A, I actually do not have a set of the ninja swords. So, um, and then to get the angel wings, which um, are the ones that kind of point straight up, the uh, the bird wings go far one, out horizontally. Uh, Dag Dag summoned one with angel wings today. His sage. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, the angel wings. Uh, they are that is going to be a sword and a fox tail. So um, sword like this summoner has here. And the fox tail, like this ninja has here, and that will get you the angel wings, or a higher chance at getting the angel wings. So that's our little lesson on the uh, the background traits uh, for for heroes. Summoning alpha from a gentic. Look forward to more in the future. Uh, yeah, I do. I do what I can. It do. <laughs> so what are you going after? You're going after the summoner with the devil wings and the. Uh... Devil horns, red. Yeah, the, the ram horns. Yeah, um, you know, if I could get red horns, that'd be badass. But uh, honestly, I don't know what affects color yet, so I'm not trying to get too complicated. But yeah, so these two are what are the two that I've been kind of, uh, you know, lately been. Uh, they're both Gen ones, and I've just been have them go at it and try to get me the, uh, the, the demon or the, yeah, the demon. Good wings. luck, man. I, ho I hope you hit it. Yeah. Um, we'll be seeing it in the Discord here soon. Yeah. Hopefully. All right. So it's already approaching an hour here, guys. Got a few more topics. We had a huge show sheet to get through, but we were not going to be able to hit everything. Um, but some important topics that we'll quickly touch on here. Um, we wanted to talk about Gen Zeros being released in Crystal Vale here potentially next week, as well as um, Agentic. Did you still want to do a quick little deep dive on the new areas in Crystal Vale? Show the yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Real, real, real quick, real quick. Uh, I think we had another jeweler question here: profession quests versus training quests, and oh, like what, else, what, your strategy, what your strategy is with those right now. So, um, before Megan, do you want to lead on that one? 
Or do you... You guys can kick it off here. That's fine. Okay, okay. I'll go into it. Uh, I mean, for me, uh, I... Dude, it's different for me than most players. I have a 44 heroes, okay? Um, so I could always have them doing everything. Um, just about. But I don't even attempt those profession quests. Uh, I was talking to Agentic about this today. Um, and I'm like, dude, even at 20, so let's say you're doing... Oh, by the way, fuck that kid Carlton. I hate that. <laughs> the, the street. Fuck the street that street guy. Violin. Fuck that guy, dude. He is so hard uh, to beat, and he freaking... My heroes do terrible against him. Go ahead and pull your hero. Go ahead and show us how your hero got your ass Oh, uh, no, this this is glitched. Uh, oh, okay. Well, maybe. Let me check. I Yeah, <laughs> I think this hero is actually mining, and for whatever reason, this won't act... I, yeah, there's a bug going on. Okay, okay. But, uh, anyway, screw the street kid, but no, uh, like, I'm done. I'm done with these profession quests, unless my heroes are above 25, because I had been doing them at 20, and I don't feel like they can, the odds aren't good enough. So I'm going to wait till my heroes have 25 in that stat, like, if they're playing Carlton, 25 agility, if they're going against the dancer, 25 endurance, if they're in the, uh, alchemist and doing with this assistance they need 25 intelligence i'm gonna see how that goes if that doesn't go good then i'm gonna wait till 30 right because mm. um to get the extra xp and to make it worth it you have to be hitting the green check marks at least two of them uh, i haven't done the exact bath on it but i feel like you got to hit at least two of those consistently to gain more xp doing that and the gold's nice too uh, because the gold has more function right now than any of the other items you're going to get. So um, I got him to, to answer the question. I got him doing everything. I think it's optimal if you can wait out on the training quest until your stats are higher. I think that's going to be the optimal approach. But interested to hear what uh, y'all think about that. Yeah, so um, I I have splitting time between train uh training quests and profession quests that first when training quests came out i was just hammering them for the first you know four or five days and then i noticed they were nerfed and rewards and everything else and it's like okay for some of my heroes that are lower level in the skills i was like this clearly isn't worth it so my like the ones that have any don't have the desired skill above 20 I have them uh, doing just solely profession quests. And then uh, the ones that do have stuff above 20, I have them doing both. Generally, I'll have them do their profession quests. Uh, I'll have the miners and gardeners do their profession quests once a day, and then I'll have them do the skill quest uh, twice a day. And then if they're fishers or foragers and they have the skills above 20, and they're just doing skills tw skill quests purely. Most of the time, that's how I have it going on right now. Um, I did happen to get some of the f a few of the scrolls, so you know, hopefully, I can get all of those. But also, I want more eggs, so you know, I I, I want to keep my toe in on the profession quest to help get egg exposure. Yeah, definitely. Um, now, for me. I I started, of course, hopping in them like everyone else. Uh, the rewards were great. I was hitting on a lot of them as well. No pages in the time I was doing it. Um, and that kind of threw me off. I was hoping to get a few. I had four to five heroes at most times I was doing them. Um, the, the gold rewards were phenomenal at the beginning until they did nerf them. And then that's what kind of put me off a little bit. Um, I have one hero, my highest, I believe, stat. Let me quickly look through. Highest stat is a 25, and I was nailing that dexterity mission, and I couldn't get anything. I was barely even getting check check marks, so I that's kind of what put me off. I was like, this is just frustrating. I don't know if my hero is not strong enough yet. It's level eight with 25 dex, um, but just wasn't getting the job done, man. I was getting no no pages, nothing. The gold came down, so I said screw that, and uh, she's back to foraging, and so is the the rest of the team back to their profession quest as of now. Yeah, I, I kind of felt like a lot of people have the same sentiment is they were all hyped when the first came out. And now I, I feel like there's been a big shift to kind of going uh, majority profession or kind of 50-50. But uh, anyway, 
Uh, go ahead and take back control, Mega, of the topics here. Yeah. Um, did you want to do the quick deep dive here on the, the few new areas we have in Crystal Vale? You got it pulled up? Yep, yep I do. Uh, anywhere y'all want to go first? So many oh, places. Oh, dude, Meditation Circle is, yeah. I think, my favorite uh, spot in Serendale and everything. Um, it just looks freaking cool Look in here that. and i don't know why but i really like it um man it yeah, just this, looks good this is kind of mesmerizing here the the fall of lava and, yeah and like Beautiful. this uh crystal emblem i guess i you know right here that kind of looks like an eth emblem um yeah man and i and i like the statues right here of the you know Maybe uh, this kind of represents a berserker, and this kind of represents a seer. You know, I don't know. Yeah, Gosh. maybe this maybe this foreshadows the advanced class. True, there's a lot yeah. we could be overlooking here. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know, but yeah, you know, I really like this spot. I, I think that the graphics art team did great with this. Of course, this will be hopefully where we'll be able to level up our uh, here. I was bridged over to Crystal Vale. Yep. Yeah. That's what we're. So, I mean, yeah, it has to be, right? It has to be, if if we're going along be. the same line. And then uh, the tavern, which I'm glad, because now that they have all these extra quests and stuff, the tavern in Serendale is a little crowded. So I'm glad they made this one a little bit bigger. Um, yeah. Uh, and I I really like it. And if you zoom in, there's some cool stuff going on in here. Some cool little details. Um. There's like some weird alien head on that table over there on the left. Um, uh, oh, right. Yeah, there. yeah, 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 yeah. If you yeah. want to zoom in on that, someone on Twitter pointed that out. Um, there's there's a bunch of cool little Easter eggs in here if you want to call them that. Or just cool stuff to look at. The agent looks really cool um, over there on the right. Um, I don't know what he is. It uh, looks like a tree creature. Or yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the barkeep too. Uh, I thought it was really interesting looking, but uh, I think this is pretty cool, and I like how in Crystal Vale, there's animal meets human people. I feel like Serendale, they're all human. I might be mm -hmm. wrong on that, but um, I like how they're introducing like these uh, creatures uh, things, so new Agent species. looks cool. Yeah, new species is the word. I'm Thank you, Mega. Uh, uh, I was looking for there, but and they got the big old fish cooking in the middle um, there, too. It's, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I like it. Tavern looks good. Yeah, this this little dude serving up drinks is kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. I didn't realize that. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, and there was one more area. They, uh, you know, since Gen Zeros are coming out here soon, they had to get the portal created here. It's great looking, too. Yeah. Um, if you want to zoom in just a little bit on that, we like the I like the the tree guy up there, um, the tree of wisdom or whatever you want to call it with the triangle on top. This area is really neat too, and they got more creatures or more species. Look at this little sacrificing little thing there in the middle circle they got going on. Yeah, little cult thing going on here. Um, yeah, also I think these bushes will probably move when you summon a hero, right? They'll probably just part. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll that, probably yeah. retract or, yep. Hero comes out right there. Um, yeah, and I, I honestly think the artwork of these two characters uh, are is really, really yeah. cool. Like, especially this guy, the druid. The arch, think, the arch druid is legit. Yeah, he looks badass. Well. He's he, he looks really like does. the most badass NPC I've seen so far. Yeah, I like him a and lot. Look at his staff. You'll see that it like lights up with energy. Boom. Yeah. Pretty, yeah, pretty he badass. is pretty cool, and the trees there are cool. I, I really like this this artwork that they did. And I and I, you notice that drunk bum over there on the left hand side of the portal? Oh shit! Yeah. I did not notice that. Yeah, <laughs> he waves to you. He does. Oh my yeah. god, he does. That's he pretty cool, bro. Uh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, the te the art team knocked this out absolutely executed this looks awesome i wonder if i uh, going back to like the new new um new advanced class i wonder if these tree people um i don't know if they're tree people i don't know what word we should call them but i wonder if we could see some sort of new half human half tree person species uh, advanced class you never know 
Shaman. There we go. You can see an Ent Shaman. Shaman. Yeah, who knows? dude, that's who knows? a good point. Yeah, who would think? Well, um, we were uh, we were off on the cradle being for summoning, apparently. So uh, yeah, still yet, to, we have no idea what that's going to yeah. be like. Yeah, we do speculation. Doesn't yeah, seem we, like it's going to be the hatchery either, since uh, no, you know. it's not. So my yeah. guess was wrong. I thought that's where we were going to hatch the eggs or something. I can't remember what I guessed. Who knows? Though, though, like maybe they'll they'll incentivize us to head over to Crystal Vale to hatch our eggs. Maybe the hatchery is like a egg um, traveler, and and he'll take care of your eggs to to bridge them to Crystal Vale. Oh, oh take yeah, there. That's Who point. knows? But oh no, I think that's a good that take. way. Our theory I... stays alive here, boys. <laughs> yeah, 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 we gotta keep. Yeah, so we gotta keep the theory alive. But no, I think that's a good idea. And uh, I did see some screenshots. I don't know if we uh, have them of the hero dueling that's coming up. Yeah, we'll throw uh, those up. If yeah, um, and this looks really cool. And man, dude, if this hero dueling comes out with the next week, week and a half, or like soon, soon, holy cow, it'd be the perfect response to all the fud. Um, and really, just good, good, good. It'd just be amazing, you know, if we could just get that out. Hey, you would think the team would have more pressure than ever to get that out now. Yeah. But I wonder what will come first, dueling or eggs. Do we know? Um, I know. I don't know where we got this information specifically from, but I, I believe we said the dual DFK duels could be scheduled for early May, we're hearing. Yeah, yeah. I think Card Game War, of course, with the three different um, skills being selected and basically dueling in, in those skills. Dude, I know it's gonna be insane. Because, uh, like, even the hero cards, they have so many different details. There's the background, there's the lightning, there's the dark, there's the earth, wind, whatever. A lot of stuff that uh, has in game that people aren't really paying attention to right now. Um, and I wonder if those will be used in more. Um, so I can't wait to see how that turns out, and I'm excited for that. Yeah, we'll definitely do a deeper dive once more information comes out. But little things that I want to point out here. Um, they did mention there'll be a specific character background. I don't know if this is going to be selected from one of the two heroes that are dueling, or if it'll just be a randomized background and say your hero is an island theme and the background of the duel is an island. Maybe you have a slight point bonus. Maybe you have a plus one to all your attributes. Who knows? But yeah. that's something they did mention, as well as in the bottom left here, you'll see um, kind of a, a web of, of types of hero types and this could be like similar to your pokemon maybe there's weaknesses strengths um specific to what type you're versing some some things to to speculate on but not too much information on those things but just interesting to see in this in this uh preview yeah but uh, and, it, go on do you it have the screenshot of the dueling up uh agentic Oh, I, I don't. I don't have. I'll the put it up for the viewers oh, okay. back home here. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but uh, no, it makes you wonder too. What's going to be the rewards? Is it going to be experience? Is it you know? Is it is there going to be some wager like some jewel wagered? You know, it will be interesting to see what they do with the the hero dueling. Um, hand it back over to you for control mega, and we can. Yeah, um, okay. we're nearing an hour 10. I want to cover one more quick topic, if we can just get our input on that, if you guys are all right with that. Yeah, 100%. Absolutely, I'm Rapping exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Um, so we did get news that potentially the Gen Zeros could be released next week. Well, how do you guys think that's going to impact crystal pricing, jewel pricing? Should we expect a pump? Of course, this is always not financial advice. This is just our opinions and our opinions only. We, we suggest you guys to do your own research and make your own investment decisions. But we love to shoot um, and, and see and speculate, of course, on, on the game overall. But what do you guys think? How do you think this is going to impact crystal and jewel pricing? I mean, uh, I don't know. It's tough with all this stuff going on, um, you know, in price. Uh, but I do feel like if – now, I think it's too early for the, the Omega Crystal Pump. I, I don't expect Crystal to go nuts here when Gen Zero's launch. And it's not until Summoning goes live that you're going to see the Crystal price increase a lot. Yeah, I, I don't know how soon Summoning will – 
happen after Gen Zeros? I wasn't here when they released Gen Zeros in Serendale. Do you have any insights into that Meg or Squanch? Uh, no, I wasn't that yet. early to this game, yeah. Uh, but I imagine it won't be long. Um, and they'll probably have that. Uh, I don't know what they'll have first. Professions or summoning, that'll be interesting too. I would imagine summoning. I would. I just. I would just think because they would want. Yeah. To, mm -hmm. you, know. you want heroes to do the professions with. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be All my right. guess. Um, real quick. Uh, I don't know if y'all this this topic. Uh, it just the in the AMA that they had. I know it seems like a years ago, right? Uh, that they had this AMA. The la the not the one they had today, but the one they had the previous Monday. Uh, they this was something real interesting, and uh, this is could affect the price of jewel and crystal altogether. Uh, the devs mentioned that they would possibly reallocate the garden emissions uh, amongst the pools. Uh, did oh, you? Yeah, good topic. Yeah, yeah. I just so this to got touched on. Uh, yeah, I think I think they're gonna do. I, I don't know. It sounded like Frisky wanted to do a vote, if I remember correctly, and they want to reevaluate uh, what. Pools are going to prioritize, and so we've talked about this on previous podcasts. Um, and and that's another thing that uh, isn't a, a good uh, thing is that the Harmony One pool is getting the most jewel missions. So hopefully uh, they change that, and it goes to, in my opinion, Jewel USDC uh, or any stable coin really would be fine with me uh, getting the most emission rewards. Um, I think it would less correlate our price dfk price to harmony price what do y'all think i'd agree i i think reallocation is needed i think that'd be beneficial and i i would 100 percent on board if if we could allocate more to the stable coins it'd be better overall for the gardens but what do you think agentic uh, yeah i you know i i have have the majority of my level of a lot of resources in the gardens in the game like i'm not a whale wallet so not a ton but just percentage wise of you know of where my assets is allocated i have i know a lot of people are like mostly heroes or or mostly gardens i'm in that part that has a, a decent majority gardens and out of the gardens i have about two-thirds of all my resources in the jewel one pool because the emissions are higher in that one they're significantly higher it's not just a little bit it's a lot um and i would be more incentivized to put resources into other pools if the emissions were closer to what jewel one was and i think you know we're try the, the team is trying to get away from the price of jewel correlating so much with the price of harmony and to do that they're going to need to have these other pools have higher emissions um and they need to drop the emissions a bit in jewel one also the it was brought up that there would would do rewards in other crypto so if you, for example, put your money in the uh, Jewel AVAX pool, you could get rewarded in AVAX. That would maybe incentivize people to uh, put their money in, you know, other pools because then they would get exposure to other coins they, you know, they like. So that was another thing I they threw out in the AMA, I believe, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting, and you know, they you would think that there's going to be a jewel crystal pool um, in Serendale, I would imagine, and then they're going to have to have an emissions for that one too. Uh, you know, so that that wraps up my thoughts. Is you know, wherever the highest emissions are is probably what's going to draw most of my uh, resources. So whatever they decide to do, yeah, I, I I'd have to agree. I think that you're the yield up. chaser. <laughs> yield yeah, chaser is going to go in the one with the highest yield paid out. Yep, that's oh, that's where I'm going to put the majority of my funds, uh, for sure. Like the two thirds more, you know, I'll probably keep it at a similar ratio. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good plan. Um, I think that wraps it up, guys. Here, uh, we've covered a lot here today. Um, a great episode. Um, some negative stuff, some positive stuff, but overall, we're all back in the kingdom and we're feeling pretty good about the future. So. Um, as always, I have my great friends Squanchy and Agentic here with me today, the Guildmasters in the Jewelers Guild. Uh, we'll be sure to include that link to join the guild down below. Great community. Shout out to all the jewelers. Much love to you guys. 
um, and, and come and join and be a jeweler today. So um, definitely subscribe to our Twitter, our YouTube. We'll include those down below as well. Um, especially if you enjoy, enjoyed today's video, drop a like as well and let us know what other topics you'd want us to cover. Um, and other than that, do you guys have any other final thoughts, topics? Feels good to be back up on the horse. Frisky, I forgive you, man. I really do. I'm behind you. Let's. I'm ready to move forward and, and get all this fun behind us, and I can't wait to play this game. Um, you know, uh, s something I may uh, float out there, Frisky. You may, uh, <clears throat> you may want to reward those that uh, never pulled their money uh, with a little airdrop, possibly. So uh, just throwing that out there that, you know, for those of us <laughs> that were completely faithful and did not have any doubts in, in the team and didn't overreact, maybe could get some, some air, something airdropped. But other than that, man, Fair enough. glad to be back on the mic and uh, recording to, uh, you know, recording this podcast with the jewelers. Without a doubt. It was a great episode here. Secret <laughs> snapshots are always welcome, Frisky. Um, <laughs> but other than that, guys. Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day in the here in the kingdom. We'll see you on the next episode, and until then, peace. Bye, everybody. Peace.